Welcome to the video. So this video is going to look at setting up a safe rigging point and we're going to be referring, referring to some pretty specific things. So we're talking about what we're going to regard as static aerial. So this will be for silks, for hoop, for trapeze. Something that's not going to be swinging, which actually puts on a lot more load. Now there are many different ways to rig and we'll look at the different pros and cons um, during this video. Installing a rigging point will require some knowledge of the forces that will be put on it, and as well as whether the structure that you're installing it on can actually take that load as well. We want to make sure that both are strong enough to take the forces that we're employing here. So skipping these steps could result in you falling and injuring yourself, even the people in the room above falling down on top of you. So it's not worth the risk, especially considering the cost of these consultations won't be prohibitive and it will certainly be less than the repair and liability costs. As we're looking at home-based solutions, we're only going to look at solutions that we're suspending the equipment from a fixed point. We're not going to include more complex rigging like pulley systems. So how strong does your rigging point need to be? Now this is probably stronger than you think when you eyeball it. Aerial arts can generate much greater forces than you might imagine, even with relatively gentle movements. So it's not like screwing a pull-up bar into a door frame you'll need a calculation of a variety of different terms. So the first one that I'm going to introduce you to is that which is called a working load limit. So a working load limit tells me that that is the load limit of the forces that are working on that point, if you like. So if I was to select a point which had a working load limit of 600 kilos, then the forces that I generate can't exceed that 600 kilos. And it's quite possible for me, weighing 75 kilos, to generate 600 kilos of force using the right techniques. So what sort of working load limit should you have for your point? That's not necessarily a simple question. The simplest answer is to ask someone with some experience because the actual working load limit of a point will vary very much depending on the weight of the person on it, the types of move that are going to be done on it and the type of equipment that's actually going to be used. For example, there'll be a very, very big difference between um, a seven-year-old using gentle moves on a hoop versus a professional artist doing um, big high impacting techniques on a rope. So at the moment, there's no simple table for you to check to get the working load limit. We are working on a project at the moment, which is gathering lots of data. Um, we collect data of the different forces that are employed using a device called a load cell. And this data that we're collecting will hopefully provide us a large picture of that data so that we can actually get a really good understanding across all different scenarios of the different forces that are employed. With professional artists, we will actually measure them to see what forces they're generating specifically for their act, because this helps them to build their technical documentation when they're working in different venues, so that they make sure that they're within um, the safety parameters that are used within those venues. So in many instances, depending on what we're doing, this here at Aerial Edge is one of the locations that we train. Each one of these rigging points that the forces can be placed on it um, can take up to uh, just over a ton, usually about 1.1 tons. And this allows us to do most static aerial work in here. And we've got all the relevant design factors to um, talk about with that. So things like design factors and maximum braking strains and working load limits are some of the technologies that we'll get into later. But it very much depends on what you're doing. So something like this, which has 1.1 ton capability on it, is certainly capable of working with most static aerial. If you're going to be doing more advanced things, then it's definitely worth, in all cases, checking. Swinging acts like swinging trapeze and swinging on things create even greater forces. And we're definitely not doing that on these sorts of points. Until we can build a good reference guide, you're going to need to consult a rigger. It's possible that a simple phone call to describe your intended use could get you your working load limit that you need. Riggers don't necessarily need to see the building, they just need to know what the rigging structure is that it's going on and what you're going to be doing on it. Calculation for the forces will depend on the weight of the performer or the performers, the type of equipment, the level of expertise, the height of the rigging point and the types of moves that will be practiced. The rigger will probably ask questions about the future because the load will change as you improve. Bigger tricks mean bigger loads. And unless you're supervising children in the house 100% of the time, you can pretty much guarantee that their pals are going to end up climbing on maybe more than one at a time. And getting close to that working load limit over time will also weaken that point. 
Ideally for performers, a rigger would use a load cell to accurately measure the forces in their act. And then they can also get a technical document to any venue where, um, where they perform to ensure that the rigging point is strong enough. If you don't know a rigger, get in touch with us and we'll try and connect you with someone who's an expert. Now, we're particularly looking for someone who's an expert at circus. Not all riggers have a good understanding of dynamic loads and the particular dynamic loads, um, should I say dynamic forces, that you're going to be applying. So is your building strong enough? Now, you're not going to know if it's strong enough to take a specific working load limit without consulting a structural engineer. There's no real way around it. You can't simply look at a ceiling and know if um, your aerial equipment will fall down when someone's upside down on it. You might be lucky and have a beam that an engineer declares can easily take the loads that the rigger has calculated that you need. If your beam is visible and you can wrap a sling around it, you're good to go. If your building setup isn't strong enough, it's usually possible to reinforce it and your engineer will advise you on what you need to do. Using a beam, again, as an example, um, the strength can depend on the type of wood, its age, um, the length of it, um, and even if there's knots from it that are missing, which are making it weaker. Once you know the strength of your current beam, your engineer may advise adding additional reinforcements, which could be additional beams, or it could be plates to spread the load across a number of beams. So overall, the cost of these adaptations could be low, or it could be thousands. Whichever it is, stick rigidly to the advice that you're given. So your structural engineer will use the working load limit and their assessment of your building to calculate another figure. And this is the factor of safety. This adds a margin to the kilogram rating that we spoke about before to take into account the material that your proposed rigging point will be set up on and how it might deteriorate over time when it's subject to repeated impacts up to that working load limit. You'll need a completion certificate for insurance or in order to sell the property in future. If you do the work yourself, your engineer may inspect the work and issue the certificate. If you hire a building contractor, they may be able to give you the paperwork too. So the next thing I want to talk about is what type of equipment do you need? There are many different ways to set up rigging points and we'll give you a lot of following examples coming up shortly, but let's talk in general about the sorts of things that all of this equipment should have that's used for rigging. So I'm not necessarily talking about circus equipment, although it's great if you can find a manufacturer that actually provides some with these sorts of marks on it. I'm talking more about your slings, your bow shackles, your eye bolts and eye beam clamps and things like that. So on this type of rigging equipment, there should be a few different markings that you should see. You should see a working load limit or WLL. That gives you that working load limit. Sometimes you'll see that written on some equipment as a safe working load or SWL. Two other things which are the marks of quality. One of them is a CE mark, which is a European standard. And from 2021, you'll see a UK CA mark, um, which is the equivalent of the same thing, but in the UK. Okay, so let's look at some of those individual pieces of equipment. So the first of those is going to be an eye bolt. Now, this is a particular device which is fitted into concrete. It's either fitted up into the ceiling or down into the floor, and it's either held in mechanically or it's held in chemically. Um, and this is something that definitely needs being fitted by a professional if we want to make sure it will actually meet those working load limit requirements. Okay, so here we can see an example of an eye bolt. In fact, this is an eye nut on a length of threaded rod. So we've got quite a thick threaded rod here, which has been sunk quite a distance into the ground and chemically bonded into that. Um, and there's enough clearance here for us to be able to clip um, things into it. So in this regard, this point is um, set up to take up to a ton um, and has been regularly tested to ensure that uh, um, it's capable of taking those loads and continues to be safe. If you have uh, an exposed steel I-beam that can support the forces that you'll be applying, or if you can install one, then an I-beam clamp will make a secure rigging point. And again, you'll need something that is rated to the right working load limit, that is CE marked, and has been properly installed. The smallest error in installation can have catastrophic results. If you have an accessible roof beam that has been proven to be strong enough, you can use a round sling and a bow shackle to make the rigging point. This is probably the least expensive method. The same points apply when considering what equipment to use as before. If installing your own rigging point turns out to be too expensive and too time consuming, the option of buying something ready-made may be the simplest solution. 
the rigging point on a frame like this should come pre-rated with a working load limit. You'll then just need to make sure that your activities fall inside that limitation of the rig um, that you buy. So ask a rigger about this. Aerial rigs, if you have the space, will certainly simplify the installation part of the equation. However, many of the legal and liability issues remain if anybody gets injured on it. Ensure you buy a rig from a reputable manufacturer. Many rigs allow very low working load limits and may not be sufficient for your needs. Tree rigging isn't something that we would recommend because poor tree rigging can be dangerous and can even kill the tree. However, it is possible to do this, but it should only be done with a trained expert in tree rigging. You'll need to consult both a circus rigger and an arborist if you wanna go down this route. So the forces applied by aerial are far higher than that of a rope swing with a tire on the end of it. Okay, let's look at some bad examples. These are things that you shouldn't do. Most equipment available from hardware stores are not suitable for used in setting up your rigging point. So the following items are commonly available, but don't meet our criteria. So all equipment should have a CE mark or a UKCA mark, um, and it should be purpose designed for supporting people. So these plates and eye bolts are commonly used to screw directly into wood. And if you do so, you're likely to actually weaken the beam you're screwing it into rather than create a strong rigging point. So do not use these for acrobatic rigging. Now, another scenario, which is creating your own rig out of wood or scaffolding, is a risky proposition, unless you have the knowledge to calculate the working load limits for your structure and to manufacture it within those standards. And scaffolding is typically not designed for that purpose. This, as a particular type of scaffolding, um, can be used, and we indeed do use it for parkour training. However, we wouldn't suggest hanging a piece of aerial equipment for a beam like this, because it's very likely to break under those sorts of loads. The two sorts of forces, as they're applied, are very different. There are some things that you should bear in mind. You may have created the perfect rigging point for your purpose. However, are you sure that it won't end up being used by more people than it's intended? if they all suddenly use it at the same time. If you've installed the rigging point in the downstairs ceiling and if you end up holding a party upstairs while someone is practicing, it's very likely you can exceed the safe, load, the safe working load of that particular beam. So remember that neither the rigger nor the engineer will take into account the factors in the first of these rigging at home videos, such as whether there's clearance to perform the tricks without damaging people or items. These aspects are definitely down to you now. How do you get the best from your engineer? Now that you've read about equipment that might be used and the type of rigging points that could be considered, you'll be able to speak at least some of the language of the engineer. Each country and region has their own legislation and restrictions on buildings and construction, and many home insurance policies rely on you staying on the right side of those regulations. You may want to choose a local structural engineer or architect so that they are familiar with the building regs for your area. Many of these professionals understand the forces and the materials, but not the acrobatics. So it's a good idea to show them a video of what you're intending to do on your particular rigging point. Draw up a diagram of what you'd like installed from the rigging point, your trapeze or hoop rigging, for example. And if you have a good understanding of the rigging point um, you would like created, then include a diagram of that as well. As always, our priority is to keep everybody safe so that we can have fun and progress our training outside of the class. And we need a level of knowledge to do that. And we need, again, an investment of time and money. And hopefully this video will help guide you down the right paths for doing that. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you want to stay up to date with what we're doing, then go to www.circusrigging.info and you can subscribe there for exclusive content. And if you're seeing this video on YouTube, feel free to subscribe to our channel and get all of the latest video updates that we're doing as well.